Alright everyone, welcome back to Random Fixes. So in my previous video, I made an adapter that turns a dumb thermostat into a somewhat smart one that can be controlled over smart speakers, such as Amazon Echo. And I used three small servo motors as the actuation unit. So have you wondered how to control a servo, or how does a servo know what angle to turn? So in today's video, I'm going to explain how to control a servo using the Arduino servo library using the very basic way and also how to control it using a shield so let's get started so a servo has three cables brown red and yellow or sometimes black white and red so the darker colored wires i.e the brown or the black wires in both cases are the ground wire which means they're going to be connected to the negative and the red wire in both cases are the power wire for the servo which is most likely to be connected to the 5 volt power rail and finally, the yellow or the white wires are for signal. So the servo.h library makes it really easy for the user to control the servo positions. What you need to do is to include the servo.h library, which is already included in the Arduino IDE software, and then create an instance of the servo object, name it whatever you want. Then we will choose a pin that the servo control outputs need to be attached to. Pretty much every pin on the Arduino works for the servo library. You don't need to use a PWM pin, but the downside is that some PWM functionalities will be disabled when you are trying to control the servos through this library. For more details, you can check the video description below. So after that, you just need to call the write function from the servo instance. And the input value ranges from 0 to 180, which corresponding to the angle in degrees. And that's pretty much it. So controlling the servo with the servo.h library is really easy. But the problem is, what if we don't have the access to the servo library? So for example, if you are controlling the servos using a ESP32, which does not have the servo library out of the box. No words for that. In fact, the logic of controlling a servo motor is surprisingly easy. Most of the servo takes a pulse of electronic signal with a frequency of 50 to 60 Hz as the command for the turning angle. And the time duration of the signal being high will tell the servo motor the angle that the user wants to achieve. And it's mostly going to be in the region from 0.5 milliseconds to 2.5 milliseconds. So for example here, I'm controlling this servo motor with an Arduino without any libraries. What I'm sending to the servo are signal pulses at 50 Hz with the time duration being 1600 microseconds or 1.6 milliseconds. Even if you're commanding the servo motor with a library, it sends the same signal to the servo motor as shown by the oscilloscope here. For an ESP32, there actually exists a function that lets you send this kind of signal, and I'm going to cover more about that in a future video. Most of the servos will have a sweep angle of 180 degrees, but if you're controlling your servo motor through the very basic way of coding in pulse signals, you may want to watch for the pulse duration. Some servos will try to turn to the angle even though there's a hard limit on the angle of motion, so in this case, it's up to the user to determine the appropriate amount of pulse signal duration. Now the third option to control the servo motors is through a shield and it's also a great for projects that have many servos so for this particular shield it can drive up to 16 servo motors without occupying the PWM pins by using the I2C bus and the good news is that you can even stack more layers to control even more servos from a single Arduino chip and the control of the angle is relatively easy as well we will need to include the wire library for the I2C communication and the Adafruit servo shield library to control the motor. So the Adafruit library does not come with the Arduino IDE out of the box. And we need to install this library through sketch, include library, manage libraries, and then search for Adafruit PWM. Usually the first one would be the one that we want to install. Just hit the install button and the software will handle it, the rest is so. So the next step is that we're going to create an instance of this PWM library. After that, we will define the max and min pulse length for the command. So here I'll have 150 and 600 for the max and min respectively. Those two values are out of a range from 0 to 4096. When you divide those two numbers by the full range of 4096, you can get the range of the duty cycle all the time that the signal has been high. And then the last two variables are the signal frequency, which I have 50 Hz here, and the channel number, which I have at S2.
from the library, we've got the setPWM function, which takes three arguments as input. Now the first one is the channel number, and it is corresponding to the number printed on the PCB. Now the second one and the third one works together for the angle control purpose. Basically, the difference between the two numbers tells the servo the angle to turn. The second argument tells the shield chip when to pull the signal high, and the third argument tells the chip when to turn the signal back to low. Both numbers are between 0 and 4096. Again, just like I previously mentioned, the time duration of the signal being high determines what angle the servo motor would turn. For example, if I would like the servo connect to channel 2 to turn 90 degrees, call the function with the first argument being 2, the second argument being 0, which means the pulse will jump to high at the very beginning, and the third argument being 270, which means the pulse falls back to low at approximately 6.6% of the pulse period. And the same angle of rotation can be achieved with different combinations of the two numbers as well, as long as the difference between them are the same. So I can get the same 90 degree of rotation with number 1000 and 1270. So it's pretty much the same except the signal is held high at a different time. Now this library definitely has more functionality than just controlling the angle. I've put the link to the detailed usage in the video description below, and you can always refer to them for detailed U documentation. Alright, that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something interesting and helpful. If this video is helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up, and also share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.